All right, so second go, and Scott. 11, here we go. This is it, Seattle Seahawks Club Championship final game. Scott, the two guys we expected to be in it are in it. Who's going to prevail? Mike will have it first. He's in the all dark blue. Kim will be in the white jerseys with the blue pants. And Rodgers with a quick 11 yard strike there. That'll be just shy. So we'll have a third and one. Let's go, right, let's go. come on. Well, I tell you what, the pressure that's in the building right now here we go, here we go. between these two guys. Oh, the drip on the palms has to be ridiculous. You know those palms are sweating and dripping in a big game like this, Coltrane. Shotgun, hands it off to Coleman, and he will squeeze his way through. And that'll be enough for a first down. Yeah, Mike likes that Tevin Coleman. He's got 91 speed. He doesn't cost you that much cap. He's a very serviceable running back to have in much salary cap. And remember, we mentioned before, he plays on conservative ball carrier, so he's not trying to make any moves. He's just, if you get an opportunity to run by, and that's why he's got Coleman. Yeah, because Coleman has that speed. It's perfect for that style of running, Scott. Plus territory, ball at the 47. Aaron Rodgers at the line. And remember, it's much salary cap. That's why you see Aaron Rodgers and Tevin Coleman in the Seattle Seahawks uniform. These guys built these teams, Scott. You get those questions all the time from some of them. Where's Russell Wilson? Because we're in salary cap. And they pick the team. They build the team that's based on their style. And Mike thinks Aaron Rodgers, and you can see the rollout. Looking downfield, oh, he's he throwing it into ball. coverage. Picked off by Alexander, stubble recovery. He's got room. And returns it to the 38-yard line, Kim's in business. Oh, and Mike gets hit during the throw, ends up in a duck, and that's why you want that gunslinger on your quarterback. If he had gunslinger on Rodgers right there, he wouldn't have had one of those longer wind-up animations, and that's why Kim plays with the gunslinger on his dick. Rolls out of the pocket. You're going to leave your quarterback susceptible. Got hit during the throw. And now Kiv needs to capitalize on that. That's a huge momentum swing early in this game for the Kiva. So first and 10. Ball spotted at the 38-yard line. Kiv with his first opportunity to sling it. Gets it outside to Sharp. What a spin That's move. It. Double spin move. Tried for a third, but wrapped up at the 48-yard line. And Kiv keeps the energizer ability on that Shannon Sharp. He says he likes to truck with him and spin with him. And since he has the energizer ability, if he successfully pulls one of those off, his temporary stamina beater will refill so he can just keep at full speed after the run. Tyreek Hill takes it to the 33. So back-to-back -back games here for Kiv, and he's already deep in Killer Mike territory. If you're in the chat and you're a Madden gamer at home and you're not utilizing these steerable spin moves or the spin moves with these elite wide receivers, you're doing it wrong. To do the steerable spin move, you hold the left trigger, the right trigger, aim the left stick in the direction you want to go and press that B button. That's what Kiv's doing when you see him pull off those crispy spin moves with Tyreek Hill. Vic steps up in the pocket, has time, and it's going to be an incomplete pass. He was hit as he threw. So it'll be a second and 10. Ball at the 33. And Do you see how often Kiv and Mike are willing to step up in the pocket throughout this whole tournament, Scott? That's a true skill. You don't see a lot of Madden players do that. Ooh. Boy, Shannon. You know, Real tough right now. When I play Madden, Scott, and I'm in the pocket, I'm just holding the left stick back, dropping back 15, 20 yards. The best players are going to be the ones that step up into that pocket, get the protection that they need, and then make the correct read. Exactly what we saw right there from young Kiv. Hey, let's go! That little replay there you saw. Pete Carroll. Watching Shannon Sharp do his thing. Ball just outside the red zone at the 21-yard line. You like Moss on the post right there, and there it is. Every time he seems to get Moss on that post in the red zone, Scott, he seems to be going to him, and Moss just continues to come up time and time again on that play. And again, that's because he has that deep route chemistry that's allowing him to hot route Moss to a post route on any play from that slot. Boy, in 95 yards of the field, Give me young Kiv leading my offense. Oh, but in the final five yards of the field, oh. it's, it's Struggleville at time. First and goal. It gets rough down here. 
And almost got away with Vic. He'll be sacked though. There's Lawrence Taylor, the legend. Yeah, it gets tough down here, Scott. Sometimes you just want to run the ball, but everyone's into the box. It's tough to sneak it into coverage. You don't got to worry about the deep ball. A lot of people like to just throw high passes to a real route, get your tight end into the back of the end zone. Curl routes are very, becoming very popular here in this red zone. But nonetheless, it is stingy and not easy to get into six. Looks like Kim wants to run the rock here. It's like a 46 bear defense. Marcus Allen spins his way down to the three. And we got third and goal. A big play. I like how Kiv's switching up his formation. To see on the play call screen right there, he's got a little eye form slot, a little eye twin wide receiver on one side, changing up the audibles, giving Mike a different look that he might not be used to. Big play here, Scott. Eye formation. Twins to the right. He got sharp in the backfield at running back. And Shannon will get down to the two. He's not, not really a running back. It's been a while since Kiv has made a field goal. He struggled in this building. The special teams woes have just been hurting Kiv so much. And it's crazy because he's a guy that you used to seeing him kick the ball perfect often. He was one of the best at it, but he's been having struggle lately. Because before he take, winds it down to the second quarter, you know, Probably going to get the boot out I right mean, I'm here, trying so. to think about this. I, I don't think he made a kick in the semifinal. I think he scored six. He missed the extra point, And then he went for two twice, got it on one of them, and that's how he got to 20 points. So we might break the ice right here finally, Scott. And my three-year-old nephew could kick that through. He's up, and it's good. Three to nothing. Kim on the board, but... If you're Mike, you got to think, okay, long drive, able to stop him in the red zone. Now it's my turn. Yeah, and that's so important when you're going up against a player of Kiff's caliber. His offense is so prolific. He's able to get points in a hurry. Anytime you can hold him to three, that's got to feel like a win for the defense. Turned it over last time. Well, Kiv was very mature, though, Scott, not forcing anything down there and ensuring that he got himself points off of the turnover. If you force a turnover in Madden, your likelihood of success goes up drastically if you're always able to turn that into points. Unfortunately for Kiff, he was able to do that right there. Go to 50. Hey, you block over here. Hands it off, and there's a big hit in the backfield. You see Kevin, a nickel normal type defense this time around. He's been jumping around between a little 4-3, a little nickel. And I like seeing that. A, a bunch of different personnel groupings being run from these players. It's a three-point game. Kiv looking so strong on defense right now. Mike's going to get himself in a big third and seven here. And Kiv's comfortable in this nickel against the gun bunch type formation. He likes the 4-3 for the gun trips tight end and then the nickel for the bunch. But there goes Mike getting out of the bunch. Hoka over here. Rodgers, this time has time. No, he doesn't. Get rid of it. Huge it's Amos coming on the blitz. And that's a budget Amos, Scott. He's only about an 80 overall, but he's got 87 speed. It's originally picked up, but then he gets a shed. And we're looking at fourth and 20. You got to feel fortunate oh anytime Amos gets a shed. Don't. Usually it's old boy, Scott, but we've seen Mike convert this time and time again. Can he keep the magic going? It was a fourth and 19 in semifinal number one. It was a fourth and 22 last year against Kev. The goal of Mike to go for this. This is insane, Scott. Picks up the blitz. He's got to let it go. Oh, safety. It's a safety. Whoa. Huge play right there for young Kev. Finally gets over the hump. Someone's finally able to stop K. Mike on fourth down. And not only did he stop him, he hits him for the safety, which is going to get him two points, plus the ball back with great field position. Young Kiv in complete control right now, Scott. How about that cover three defense on fourth and 20? No one open downfield. And I guess he thinks, hey, I'm going to give up an interception or a two points here. We'll see if that strategy comes back. Dehan him a little later on. Dion takes a big hit. 
at the 49. Look at Kim focused. I don't blame you, Scott. That's a nice set of lettuce he had. <laughs> kid, Kim's had the best hair in the game for a while now. Both, both of these guys from the, you know, Seattle, Washington type area. Obviously, Mike, Mike says he grew up in Costa Mesa, California, but he's now stationed in the Air Force in Spokane, Washington. Kids, kids from Edmonds, Washington. Both of these guys, Seahawks fans. And Kim scrambles to the 48. Got an opportunity right here to maybe seize this game, go up by two scores. And I, you said it right, right there, Scott. Seize the game. That's what he needs to do here. Kill him, Mike. K Mike is way too feisty to keep around into the game. If you have your chance to pour water on him while he's drowning, you have to do it. That's the saying they say in Madden, uh, Scott. When you see a man drowning, what do you do? You throw water on him. You can't give players like K Mike an inch. He's just way too good. Snaps it with one on the play clock, and there comes the heat. Jabril Peppers gets in there for the sack. See Kiv's recent plays. He's just coming out in that patch curl flat play almost every down exclusively. But then what he'll do is he has his audibles with him at the line of scrimmage, and he'll change that to a variety of different plays, whether it be patch sales, vertical, a base, whatever it may be. Hey, let's go. Boy, Mike has won 19 in a row here in the club championship. And you're right, the Seahawks have never lost. And there's a two minute warning. So second and 15, Kiv up by five. Here in the final two minutes of the first half, Scott Cole and RG along with you. So if Mike is 19 and 0, and we, I'll consider him like the Undertaker, how he kind of was in WrestleMania, it's Kiv Brock Lesnar. I think we'll find out by the end of this game. Certain streaks you just never think would end, Scott, but everything does come to an end, but I don't think Mike's gonna go away quietly. That was Jabril Peppers once again, this time with the knockdown at the line of scrimmage, forcing a third and 15, and that's an overthrow. And here comes fourth down. You got to go for it here, right? Yeah, I think if you're a kid, you're, you're going to get aggressive. You, you, Mike, even if Mike stops you right now, he's not blatantly into field goal range. You've already made some stops. You got to try to get all over him, take advantage of the safety. He's going for the glory. If you're Mike, you're willing to let up any of that stuff underneath. You just got to protect those sticks and not let anything get behind it. Watch for Tyreek Hill. He's solo to the right. Good blitz pickup. Wow. I've seen a few games, RG. I've watched a few games. Good call. Good call, Scott. And the other thing that I like what you saw Kibbs do right there is Mike was sending a heavy pressure. And then Kid just leaves in the tight end to block, get himself some extra time. And that's what you love about the gun bunch formation. It's part of why it's so popular. It's, it's really phenomenal at helping you pick up a lot of these pressures. There's a sack at the 30-yard line. It'll bring up a second and 10. Kiv historically has taken a lot of sacks, though, Scott. When we always oh, yeah. look at his stats, he is willing to take that sack rather than force a pass into coverage, and it's why he doesn't turn the ball over very often. Boy, nearly threw it in traffic there. There was two guys coming loose. Right on cue, he's telling him he doesn't like to throw passes in coverage, <laughs> throws right at a defender. Good old commentator curse. Vic Beasley Jr., I've already made give miss an extra point earlier. Yeah, see, he just max protected right there, Scott. That's a mechanic that you have to use if you want to be able to play at a high level. Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The pressure still gets there. Lawrence Taylor. Look at that dance, swagging around. <laughs> but he kept his tight end and his running back into block. If you want to, Scott, at the line of scrimmage, for those that don't know, you press the LB button that pulls up the slide protection. You go left, right. Pinch or max protect. He went max protect right there. Didn't work out. It's a perfect kick finally for Kiv. And it's down the middle. And we still have a one possession game. Eight to nothing. If you if you Mike, you gotta be feeling good. All is good as one of his game his gamer tag is right now for him. If you're able to give up a safety, throw an interception, and you're still only down one possession, you gotta be feeling pretty good about that. 
especially to the, against a player the caliber of the great young Kiv. And Kiv up by eight with a field goal, a safety, and another field goal. So we still yet to see a touchdown hey, 88, 88, here in this 88. first half. 54 hey. seconds to go here in quarter number two. Mike with two timeouts. And there's Johnson. Boy, what's going through his head right now? It's not been a great offensive first half for Mike. I think if you're Mike right now, you, you want to get pointed to a priority, priority, but you need to make sure that you don't turn the ball over right now. That happens to so many man and players. You get greedy before the half, you can turn the ball over, and that would allow Kip to make this two possession. That's what he can't let happen right now under any circumstances if you're Mike. Ocho will step out of bounds there. It'll be a first down at the 41. Two timeouts, 24 seconds to go now. Right, right. Yeah, Liz, Liz. It's the man with the horseshoe in his pocket. We are going. Over these last couple seasons. Gotta watch these deep crossing routes and the corner routes. There's that deep cross over the middle. Rogers gets loose, gets it to Moss on the playmaker, and the clock's on the move yeah, here. Where's the timeout? There it is. A little slow on the fingers right there by Mike to call that timeout. So one timeout, maybe two or three plays here on second and three. 26. Over, over, you gotta over, watch over, Moss over, on over, that over, deep over. crossing route over the middle. Get him right into field goal range with a completion like that. He's got Jerry Rice though. What a and hit. He dropped it. What a hit. That was a huge, huge hit. hit. Look at this. Jerry Rice just runs the post up, finds some space, and then boom! Same the route that Kev ran to get it to Tyree Kill, but the difference is Jerry Rice couldn't overcome the hit stick. Third and three. That was an 81 overall. Brian Dawkins getting back there to make that hit, Scott. And one-handed oh. grab can't hang on, and now you got forked down. Here with four seconds left in the half. Winner of this one will move on to next week. They'll put five grand in their pocket. They'll represent the Seattle Seahawks and take on the rest of the right, league in that $700,000 prize pool in hey, San Francisco. It'll be our first time out there, first event at the new home for Madden in San Francisco. And what a grab. That'll be the end of the half, though. Eight to nothing. Kim blanks Mike. This has been a phenomenal game, Scott. It's exactly what we expected. Two high-level competitors going back and forth. Both of them wanted. Both of them's club championship life on the line. So Kim will have it to start the second half. And as a Madden player, Scott, this is a great position to be in. You're not in any rush. You're already up eight points. If you can put together a long drive to get yourself some points right here, You'll be feeling really good about yourself. And Kiv's got himself in a great position to get a ton of momentum. He just needs to do something with it with this drive. But again, being up eight points, you don't have to be in any type of rush. You can kill the clock. You can take your time. You just got to make sure you execute right now is the most important thing. Young Kiv, the defending champion there in Madden 18. It was a three-point win over Drini in Dallas last year. He's beat a lot of the big names in Madden. You can name them off, but one man he's never beat, and that's Mike. Yep. No, nobody's beat Mike in this club championship. His lot, again, last year he couldn't make it to the final eight against his game against Ghost, who ended up going on to win the whole entire club championship. And what a read. Moss will drag it in at the 27. Okay. That's a dippity dot. That's a dippity dot, and that's a huge dot, Scott, because now it gets Kiv into field goal range, and more so than ever right now, he needs to protect the ball, take his time, continue to kill clock, and ensure he gets these points. And not the field goal makes it an 11-point ball game, which is huge. Sharp. Tries to spin away, gains one. Require Mike to have to score a touchdown, get the two-point conversion, get a stop, and kick a field goal. And not to mention, if Kip can turn this drive into a touchdown, he'll really be putting Mike into a hole. I don't know if he'll be able to dig himself out of it. Second and eight and a half. They get it to Sharp. 
And he'll get down to the 15. He's now in the red zone. And you see this out of this bunch formation, Scott. The guys that have the best success out of it are the ones that are willing to check down to that flat route, take their 5 to 10 yards, and do it as long as the defense gives it to them. And then when that's adjusted to, you have a route over top to go to. There's Jabril Peppers again, knocking it down at the line of scrimmage. What well, touchdown here would be devastating for Mike. Oh, devastating. Right? The thing for Kid that hurts right there is these incomplete passes, Scott. They end up stopping the clock. Gary worked a minute and change off here in this second half as Kiv gets Vic with loose. Uh, gets loose with Vic for just a moment. It's going to be third and six. And keep talking about the clock, Scott, but remember, it's five minute quarters. Time of possession in Madden is so important. Each possession is so important. You don't have a lot of time. I remember the Patriots against the Chargers in the playoffs. They put together a seven minute and 45 second drive. That could be done in Madden as well. So it's important to control the clock and limit possessions. That's what you get with Vic sometime. The overthrow. And here's a field goal opportunity. Not perfect, but the accuracy is right down Main Street. And we got an 11 to nothing game. Been an awkward game, to say the least. Still zero touchdowns. Three field goals and a safety for Kiv. <laughs> Hey, you got it. If you're going to take on the undefeated K Mike and try to get away with a W, you're going to have to grind it out, Scott. This is going to be a big drive. Mike has been in a box for the entire first half. Gets it here with 2.49 to go. Mike in the all blue, Kibbs in the white jerseys with the blue pants. Look at this middle of the field. You see this, Kibbs just. And a cover two look as his linebackers manned up on a receiver and the running back. He's just sending the goons. And nowhere to go as Taylor will wrap him up back at the 16. He'll actually lose a yard. Yeah, this style of the defense from Kiv, it just forces you to attack that middle of the field where he's often lurking around with his user defender. And when you're messing with Kiv's user defender, you're playing with fire. Rogers the playmaker. has some room. Oh, he's off. going off. It's Dawkins. The former Clemson Tiger and newly inducted to the Hall of Fame just came up big for Kiv. Oh, the trajectory on that pass just devastating for Mike. It looked like the playmaker got him plenty of room up the field. Kiv reacts to it, gets the interception with Dawkins, and that was a huge play. And now he's oh, almost on his horse, Scott. Shakreen Griffin saved a touchdown. Look at this again. Look at this. He's down, comes. Bluff, I'm going back. Not enough arc on it. Give me the Yixin user lurk. You heard of jiu-jitsu, that sticks to. And now Kim with a commanding and commanding position to come away with this game. But again, Scott, he needs to find a way to get himself in the end zone, make the three possessions, and continue to let that clock tick like he's doing. Mike is still dangerous here. This game is not over, especially if he can hold Kiv to three. Keep it a two-score game. That's got to be what Mike's thinking. If Kiv can put a touchdown in here, he's going to be going to San Francisco and representing the Seahawks. That's how big these next 17 yards are. This could be four-down territory for the Kiva. He's already up two possessions. I know the field goal makes it two touchdowns. But he really might be trying to put Mike away. Oh, he doesn't, doesn't need it. Doesn't need it. First down gone. to Deion Sanders. And now it's going to be first and goal from the 10. And that was a great example, Scott. We always say, oh, they all run the same stuff. It's a young bunch, whatever. You might run the same play, but you run it a ton of different ways. Kiv mixes in the hitch route right there. You haven't seen it from him all day. Gets it in a crucial situation. And that's why he's the young Kiv. He cooks him up when he needs him. So first and goal now. Marcus Allen off to the right of the left-handed Michael Vick. Hands it off to Marcus, and he'll lose a yard. And you see the difference between Kiv and Decroft. Kiv not snapping that ball until there's one second left on the play clock, taking all the time that he can. As long as that clock's ticking, he knows that he's doing the right thing, and that's veteran experience right there from young Kiv. Needs to take this under 30. 
push this thing to the fourth quarter. Oh, it's on. He can keep the clock running here on second and goal. He needs to be careful, though, and not get too conservative. I think he's playing for three here. He might get the is, touchdown. Is he in? He's he did in. there. Oh, and look at the emotion of the Kemba. He knows how big that was, Coltrane, to go up three possessions against the undefeated phenom, K. Mike. And we might be seeing young Kiv getting over the hump to represent the Seattle Seahawks. That was huge. Three score game now. And it's up and it is good. We know Kim is incredible on offense, but his defense has come to play. I mentioned before, he's ranked in the top five in both run and pass defense. And what a play by Marcus Allen. I, I was thinking, Kim, you got to be careful, not get too conservative. I was thinking maybe he'd run the ball, take it to the fourth quarter, and then try a pass. Look at that emotion. But instead goes to run to take it to the fourth quarter, gets an open, open it. Marcus Allen does what he does over, 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 and gives Kiv the three-possession game. 26. Zoom, zoom. Good. First and 10 at the 16. Mike needs a miracle. Almost picked Almost off. Picked off. Almost. Yeah, Mike has got himself in some deep waters right here, and this drive is critical, Scott. He's, it's already a long shot for him to come back and win, but it's not completely out there. But getting points on this drive is going to be so significant if he wants that comeback story to be a thing. Gets it there to Dallas Clark. It's going to be just short. It's going to be third and one. He's going to try to get a playoff before the end of the third quarter. And you got to be careful. Sometimes you rush these type of plays, Scott, and you get blown up. Yeah, there it is. He'll go to the air. It's locked up. And it's locked up. Lattimore's got him completely blanketed. We're going to start in the fourth quarter. It's going to be fourth and one. I've been in that situation a ton of times, Scott. The clock's ticking. You're down. You want to make sure you get the playoff before the end of the third quarter. But sometimes you end up rushing it. And that's what happened to Mike right there. And Big there is play. Clark. That'll pick up the first down. Needed that. On fourth and one, too, Scott. That's scary to get out there and slang the rock on that fourth and short, but that's what he needs to do. Rodgers fires. Rice has got some room. Doesn't have the speed, but he gets it to midfield. Clock on the move. Check 26. Clock, the thing here, Scott, is that clock still ticking. You see it. Less than five minutes left for Mike to complete this comeback. He's going to need to start getting points in more of a hurry. Oh, and that's a sack. Huge sack. As Taylor gets in there again, his second sack of the game. And yes, that's Jason Taylor. We have legends in Mutt. Yeah, Liz, Liz. Long time Miami Dolphin. And there is Coleman out of the backfield. That's a new wrinkle, and it'll be third and two. Boy, he needed that one. It's good to get Coleman out of the backfield and attack that middle of the field. Kiv is accounting for so many routes over that middle of the field. You really got to make him make a decision. Boy, in that time, he had no one in the middle of the field. No routes coming across the middle, and here's fourth in the game. It's hard when that pressure is coming. You, you usually want to attack the middle. You like that running back on the streak. You're tight end on the drag. But Kiv is sending the goons time and time again. So you need to end up keeping these guys into block. And that's why he feels comfortable trying to take away so much with one defender. Because a lot of times there's only three routes on the field. But for the drag. Why? Oh, what a read. Good find down there at the 26. I was going to say the drag or the flat. He goes right up the seam for the first down. This is big. Mike, I mean, still plenty of time left in this game, continuing to move the ball. If he can get a touchdown in the two-point conversion, keep himself with the three timeouts, keep himself with the two-minute warning. I mean, Kiv's going to be in a situation where it's not a give me. And Coleman forced out of bounds at the 20-yard line. They're looking phenomenal in this nickel defense, though, just continuing to make Mike chip away, not giving up the big plays, guarding the deep crosses, looking at the drags himself. And there's another sack. 
This time it's Amos swagging around. That'll bring up a third and 14. And Kiv said it. He called it before the event. He said, Amos is my guy that gets a lot of pressure. I blitz that nickel back. We know the nickel back blitz has been a huge tactic in the competitive Madden for a long time now. So he doesn't spend a lot of his cap on the pass rushers. As he's, ex he's expecting that blitz to be where the pressure comes from. Confirmed from RG that Kiv is a huge Nickelback fan. <laughs> well, look at this photograph down at the one yard line. Got to punch it in here. I yeah. mean, four tries at it right here. If you're Mike, you, you got to get some urgency in here. Speed it up. Hopefully for him, he could run a goal line, maybe sneak it in, get a quick score. And it'll be interesting to see if he decides to go for two right away. I don't want to count the chickens before they hatch. He still needs to get into the end zone here. You know Kip's going to have sneak the Hand it off, and he's going to lose a few. This is the problem when you have Coleman. And that was that power O we saw Mike run earlier in the event that he took for a big touchdown. Instead, it gets blown up right there. And the big thing about that blow up is now instead of the one yard line, you're on the three yard line. So QB sneak becomes irrelevant and Kiv no longer has to worry about that. That's the difference between a Coleman or a Fournette or a Marcus Allen. He's going to empty out the backfield here on second and goal. Clock really a factor right now. And he oh, throws the kid, I learned them! Ba Felicia. This one is over. Kim will fall down in the end zone for the touchback, but it's Sean Taylor who ends up clenching it for Kiv. And he knows he's he's finally done it. And uh, you got to be happy for young Kiv. It's been so long in the making. Big play right there by that right outside linebacker out of position. 51 cap Sean Taylor. And if you're in the club championship, look out. You got a young kid you're probably going to have to deal with. Play quick throw here. It's user all the way. No click on. He started with Taylor. He ended with Taylor. And that blitz heavy scheme, Scott, it's just a lot for people to deal with. You're going to have to make Kiv make a bad decision with his user defender, and that's just not going to be easy to do. Kiv stays in bounce. Very smart right there. Two-minute warning here. I think Mike still knows anything can happen here. In our eyes, it's GGs. Yeah, unless but something drastic happens. I also GGs in the chat. I also remind you of a Kev Drini Madden challenge that got wild real quick. I don't, I'm not expecting that. I'm just I'm just giving you both ends of the spectrum. Uh, and here's a big fourth and nine. Regardless, the Seattle Seahawks have to be thrilled that year after year they have two elite competitors like Mike and Kiv that can constantly show up, try to rep your great organization, do you justice in the tournament. And you know what? Either one of these guys you send into that field of 32, you're going to have a really good chance, and they're going to have a phenomenal chance with young Kiv representing them in that club championship event. It all starts on January 30th, live from the brand-new Madden Studios in San Francisco. I'm excited to see it. I've seen a few renderings, seen a few pictures, but it's nothing like seeing it for the first time for the real time. I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. If you're in the chat, let us know if you're looking forward to that event. If you have any favorites, who do you think you're going to, who's going to win that event? I want to know. I always go back and read the chat. Love seeing your guys' comments. Let us know. We are going. This is it for Mike. You need everything to go right for you right now. And there's Moss down at the 10. That was a route we saw Mike get George with a lot throughout the game. The problem was during this game, he just didn't have the time to let those routes develop. Even right there, you see him under heavy pressure. Kiv's blitz has just been all oh, over goodness. Mike. And there it is some more. Another Stevie. And there's my man, Brian Dawkins. Covering the ball, swagging around. Takes advantage of the bird box read. And that's going to be the yeah. game right there, Scott. GG's to Mike. His first loss in all of the club championship. He is 19-1. and one, And Kim has finally done it. He's finally climbed the mountain there in Seattle. And he is your Madden 19 Seattle Seahawks club champion. We will see him next week. He's going over there already getting the belt from Rico. And what more can you say about it? 
Oh, man. Young Kiv. I mean, shout out to K Mike. He's just been a phenomenal competitor for years on the scene. But today is Young Kiv's day. You got to be so thankful for him. I'm going to start calling him Brock Lesnar because he ended the Undertaker streak. And you know what? Seattle's got a true champion. Kiv has finally gotten over the hump. He told me years ago, why won't K Mike let me be great? Well, guess what, Kiv? You are now continuing to be great, and we can't wait to see you in the club championship looking to get that $100,000. Well, my guy Rico, he's standing by with the champ. Thanks, Scott. Kiv, you're holding that belt. How does it feel? Feels awesome. I finally won the Seahawks Club Championship. It's been three years now. Killer Mike got the best of me the last two times, but luckily I was prepared and um, I was really, I felt really good going into that game. I prepared for him the most because he had beaten me twice in a row and it showed on the game. In your earlier games, you were having a little bit of trouble kicking. It didn't look like luck was on your side. And we know in the past games, you've had a little bit of issues with luck. How did you feel in that final game? I felt good. Uh, luckily for me, I didn't really have to be in any bad situations for some bad luck to go against me. And my defense was playing really good, and I was just controlling the ball on offense. So didn't really have any luck going into the game. Now we see you have that belt. You're on your way to the club championships to try to get another belt. What are you going to do to get ready for that? Just prepare for these next, uh, I think it's like 10 days or something like that. Just prepare, play the game a lot. Um, I got to be ready for everything. I got to be ready for trips, tight end bunch, everything. You're going to see so many different offenses and defenses with this single elimination format, playing whoever. So just got to be as prepared as I can be and play my A game. Hopefully I can get the big belt. All right, and there you have it, our 2019 Seattle Club Champion. We're going to go back to RG and Scott to bring us on home. All right, thank you so much.